Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is one of the largest and most populous cities on earth. Over 20 million people call this bustling metropolis their home. Sao Paulo is served by two main airports for commercial flights. There is the larger Guarulhos Airport serving international traffic on top of many regional operations. This airport is the primary gateway for many entering Brazil through Sao Paulo. There is also the smaller Congonhas Airport. Congonhas is a domestic hub with flights to most cities in this region of southern Brazil. It is also partly the subject of today's video. On July 17, 2007, TAM Airlines Flight 3054 crashed at Congonhas Airport just after landing on the runway. The plane, an Airbus A320, skidded off of the runway where it overshot the airport boundaries, crashing into a TAM Airlines building on the opposite side of a main road. The resulting crash killed all 187 people on board the plane, as well as a further 12 on the ground. The plane is a highly sophisticated machine, being flown by well-trained pilots, so how did the plane crash like this? The Airbus A320 is one of the most popular planes ever built. The modern high-performance narrowbody jetliner first launched in the late 1980s utilizing fly-by-wire technology. The A320 and subsequent Airbus planes feature a highly complex computerized flight deck. Pilots trained on this plane are taught the inner workings of the logic used in these flight computers. They must establish a clear relationship with the aircraft systems. In 2005, Brazilian airline TAM Airlines purchased 20 of these A320 planes. Further A320 aircraft would later be acquired from other airlines. One such aircraft was registered as Papa Romeo Mike Bravo Kilo. This plane had previously flown for the Salvadorian airline TACA, as well as the Vietnamese airline Pacific Airlines, before ending up in the hands of TAM in Brazil. In the evening on July 17, 2007, this TAM A320 would make a flight between Porto Alegre and Sao Paulo's Congonhas Airport. The plane left the Brazilian city of Porto Alegre about 500 miles southwest of Sao Paulo around an hour ago. The routine flight itself is one which is around two hours in length. On the flight deck of Flight 3054 was Captain Henrique Stefanini de Sacco, a well-accomplished pilot at 53 years old. He had logged nearly 14,000 flight hours. Also on the flight deck is a second captain instead of a first officer. 54-year-old Captain Kleber Aguia Lima was sitting in the right-hand seat. He himself had logged nearly 15,000 flight hours. By all accounts, this is a highly experienced flight crew, albeit unusual to have two captains on the flight deck. Also on board are 181 passengers and four flight attendants. To understand why this crash turned out so deadly, we first need to more closely examine the destination airport of Sao Paulo Congonhas. Congonhas Airport, by several metrics, is a tiny airport relative to the level of traffic that the airport sees on a daily basis. There is not much room here to expand the airport as it's surrounded on all sides by residential urban areas. The airport opened in 1936, and over the years the city expanded around it. It is not only one of the busiest airports in Brazil, but also one of the busiest in the Southern Hemisphere as a whole. Despite being relatively small, it still operates with two runways, runway 17 left and right, and 35 left and right. The accident which occurred at the airport in July of 2007 was on runway 35 left. Both runways are short, the longer of the two still being just under two kilometers in length, making this airport unsuitable for larger planes. The airport these days only sees domestic traffic, however, short-haul international flights were available up until the 1980s. Intercontinental traffic even then was forbidden due to the small size of the airport. As a result, most long-haul travelers needed to travel through Rio de Janeiro to get to Sao Paulo. The airport itself is elevated. Planes taxiing out to the runways tower above the people and cars below. The busy roadway of Washington Luis Avenue runs northbound on the west side of the airport, and passes by the north end of the runways. This busy main road connects to other roads and runs into the center of Sao Paulo. The nature of this airport and the runway of 35 left became infamous among pilots to quote the accident report. In the end, the operational conditions of Congonhas Airport brought the pilots a feeling of unease, according to what was learned from the interviews with other pilots familiar with the airport. 
The reason for the discomfort was precisely the lack of options in case of emergencies. The airport offered little or no margin for errors or failures. This negative influence of the runway on the psychological aspect perceived during the investigation occurred within a context in which the management and inspection of the airport infrastructure played important roles, generating a feeling of unsafety in the crews that operated to that airport. Airports like Congonias, which are small, crowded, and surrounded by urbanization, are not all that uncommon in Latin America, one of the most infamous examples being Toncontin Airport in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Fundamentally, there is nothing unsafe about these airports, so long as they are well maintained and the correct safety procedures are followed. Airports such as this exist all over the world, but it is unusual for an airport like this to see the level of traffic that Congonia serves. In 2005, runway 35 left where the accident of flight 3054 occurred appeared to be showing a decrease in efficiency with regards to friction and irregularities in the runway's gradient. These irregularities would cause a buildup of water on the runway during times of rain. One month prior to the accident of Flight 3054, the main runway here was repaved. Heavy rain in the area would often mean that accumulation of water on the runway posed a safety risk out of the possibility of a plane not being able to break in time and overrun the runway. By the time of the accident, despite the runway being repaved, the water drainage grooves in the runway were not installed. This would not be completed until September of 2007. As it turned out, on the evening of July 17, 2007, it was raining at Congonias Airport. The plane flying as TAM 3054 had already landed at Congonias twice that day. Notably, on its first arrival that day, it was also raining. TAM Airlines Flight 3054 was now approaching Congonias Airport. The weather conditions, according to the investigation report, was considered to be adverse. The flight crew made a few deviations to avoid weather. It should be noted that there was a peculiar quirk with the state of the plane's engines on this flight. The reverse thrust on the right side number 2 engine was inoperative. The crew were notified about this beforehand and had planned to handle the plane accordingly. Reverse thrust is a primary tool used by pilots to slow a plane down on a runway. It effectively works by redirecting airflow against the plane's forward momentum, slowing it down. Passengers can recognize this as an increase of engine power on landing. Four days earlier, the reverse thrust on this engine was deactivated because of a leakage in the inner actuator of the engine. The plane, however, was allowed to keep flying in accordance with the minimum equipment list issued by Airbus. When a plane lands on a runway, there are multiple ways that an aircraft can be slowed down. There are the aforementioned reverse thrusters which can redirect airflow. There are also spoilers which can deflect air on top of the wings. These stand up from the top of the wing disrupting the airflow and reducing lift. This tool can also come in useful for pilots who need to descend quicker or need to quickly slow down in the air. Manual and automatic braking are also available to pilots on commercial aircraft. On top of pilots having manual brakes at the pilot's feet, auto brakes are also common. Usually coming in different levels of braking power, this alleviates the pilots needing to brake themselves. At an airport with such a short runway like Congonias, all of these tools may be necessary, especially so on flight 3054 in which one of the reverse thrusters was not operating. On the Airbus A320, there are different engine settings the pilots can select by moving the throttles. The throttles on this plane and other Airbus manufactured planes work differently to the traditional throttle controls. Because of the automated philosophy adopted by Airbus, the computer does most of the engine control through what Airbus calls auto thrust. While manual thrust control is possible on the A320, it is not the normal procedure. The auto thrust commands on the Airbus throttles are as follows. The highest setting is TOGA, short for takeoff go around. As the name suggests, this setting can be used for takeoff and for go arounds. It can also be used in scenarios where excessive power is urgently needed, such as possible conflict with terrain for example. The next setting down is the flex takeoff and maximum continuous thrust setting. This other takeoff setting can relate to the details that the pilots program into the flight computer. Below this is a region on the throttles called CLIMB, abbreviated to CL. After takeoff, pilots reduce the throttles into this range. On the throttle controls themselves, this region is labelled with a continuous line with zero labelled at the bottom. Further below this is the reverse option, which is the reverse thrust controls for the engines. 
With just a few minutes to landing on runway 35 left at Congonias, the crew of TAM Airlines Flight 3054 began their preparations for landing. The entirety of the flight was uneventful until the plane touched down on runway 35 left at 6.48 in the evening. Captain Stefanini de Sacco executed a normal approach to the airport and brought the plane down onto the runway as normal. However, according to data extracted from the flight data recorder, just seconds before touchdown, the right engine remained in the CL or climb position, so the autothrust was still governing that engine. The throttle control relating to the number one engine was pulled back to the idle position instead of both engines, which is what the crew should have done. This would have disconnected the Airbus autothrust on both engines. The plane's audible warnings did sound on the flight deck to remind the pilots to pull the throttles back into the idle position, but they only did this on the left hand number one engine. Now on the runway, the captain should now be trying to get his plane to slow down. The right hand captain calls out the reverse thrust operating on the number one engine only as expected. In the final 25 seconds before disaster, both pilots would seem to struggle to understand why the plane will not slow down as it continues down the runway. The crew noticed that the wing spoilers have not deployed. The reason for these spoilers not activating was because while the pilots did arm them to come out automatically on landing, they also require a secondary electrical check for both of the thrust levers to be pulled back into the idle position. As already mentioned, on flight 3054, the pilots only pulled the left throttle control into idle, possibly thinking that only this was needed as reverse thrust was not available on the right hand engine. In fact, the data recordings of engine parameters showed an increase of power on engine number two. With only one engine in reverse, the other providing forward thrust, no activation of the spoilers on top of the plane landing on a short, wet and slippery runway, the situation on flight 3054 quickly became severely urgent. Over the next few seconds, the cockpit voice recorder transcript reveals the pilots beginning to lose control of their plane as runway space is quickly running out. Nearby cameras captured the plane on video in its final moments. The plane was simply not decelerating fast enough. Quickly running out of runway, Captain Lima in the right hand seat suggests turning the plane left off of the runway in a desperate attempt to slow the plane down. While still traveling at over 90 knots and having been driven off of the runway and onto the grass and over nearby taxiways, TAM Airlines Flight 3054 breaks through the airport boundaries on the north side of the airport. The momentum of the plane carried it over the busy Washington Luis Avenue, where the Airbus crashed into a TAM Airlines building. Firefighters and first respondents quickly arrived on the scene. The whole building erupted into flames. 187 people on board the A320 were killed in the disaster. A further 12 people were killed on the ground for a total of 199 fatalities. Recommendations by the investigation were made to TAM Airlines, Airbus, the Brazilian Aviation Authorities, and to Congonhas Airport itself. These included making the appropriate corrections to runway 35 left, correctly executing maintenance, and to monitor the levels of friction on the runway. Training at TAM Airlines was to also be re-evaluated, and to emphasize strict adherence to operational procedures. In 2016, TAM Airlines merged with the Chilean carrier LAN and became LATAM Airlines. Sao Paulo's Congonhas Airport is still in operation today. A memorial and small park now lays where the disaster occurred on the site of the old TAM Airlines building. There has never been a fatal incident at the airport since. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. A big welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. We surpassed 20,000 on Thursday morning and I am thrilled that people have been enjoying the content. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe as there are new videos every Saturday. It is that time of the week again where I thank my patrons for their support over on Patreon. If you would like to get your name featured or read out at the end of the next video, you can join my Patreon from £3 per month and the link to that will be in the pinned comment. A thank you to my £5 tier patrons, Aidan Montgomery, Hector Palmatellas, Jacopo, KTP123, Ken Zachman, Christy, Marie Innes, Pac-Man 7, and Panic Chicken. Thank you all so much. A special thanks to my generous £10 tier patrons for their generous support. Cherub Cherub, Daniel Hendricks, D. Rogers, Mike Milton, Side Effect, a new joiner to the Patreon, Roger Mayer, 
and Will Tanner. I truly cannot thank you all enough for your support. And that is it from me for now. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.